Okay, I've started my prep by taking the pumpkin, which you'll see once it's baked, uh, cutting it like I was going to make a jack-o'-lantern, scooping out all the seeds in the guck, and uh, putting oil inside and out, and on the uh, top of it as well, putting it into a 350 oven. I'm going to let it go until it gets a little bit brown, and then I'm going to show you what I do with the uh, with the meat of the pumpkin because we want it in the actual stew. Here's my beautiful meat, and she was right. It defrosted with no trouble. I've dried it off, and I'm going to sprinkle it first with a bit of salt. have some oil just touching the surface of the pan back there that's been heating up some canola oil and just a bit of flour. A bit more, let's see. Until <laughs> it's coated. There, that's going to be good. is to let things brown. Give them the time. You get frantic that things are going to burn. They're not. It takes a lot to burn something. Just stay around hovering. You're not going to burn it. But you want it to caramelize. You want the flavor to deepen. Just like with caramel. You want the meat to get nice and brown. So we're going to leave it there. I'm not going to fuss. You're not going to see me doing a lot of prep here. And there's a, there's a good reason for that. I'm not very good with knives. I'm, I try my best. Things do get chopped. When I need to do it finally, I do the work. But um, the last time I got myself a really sharp knife, I was using it to prepare a skin. I was so excited. It was working so well for me. So next thing you know, uh, I'm at the hospital. I have amputated, as they put it in this note that they sent me home with. Uh, part of my thumb. <laughs> I just don't want you to have to see the gore. So I'm saving you the gore. Uh, let's see how our meat is doing. That's starting to look lovely. Remember, don't crowd the pieces or they'll just kind of steam in a disgusting way. Let me tell you about this wine that I'm drinking because I really like it. I'm fussy about Chardonnays. I like them big and sapid and bold. And I found one. Three nights. It's a Russian River Valley Chardonnay, California wine. I got it at Trader Joe's and I believe it was $6.99. An outrageous, outrageous price. It, it tastes like a $20 bottle of wine. So you might want to check it out. Let's see. Ah, this is good. Mmm. And go by your nose, too. When you start to smell the caramelization, then you're in good shape. Okay. Remember that beautiful onion and shallot that I got at the market this morning? It's in here. And I'm going to use a good amount. Let's add some bay leaf for depth. All that brown stuff is going to be wonderful flavor, and we will get that up by the end. Ow, I burned myself. Okay. Don't fuss too much with it. I'm fussing too much with it. Leave it alone. Let it cook. Okay. That onion is looking good. I'm going to put back the meat. 
if you try to saute everything at once, it's just not going to get done. So there's my basis. Now, a Cabernet. Mm. Let me get all the brown bits up. A little more Cabernet. And I'm also going to add some beef stock. All right, I'm going to lower the fire. And now, cover. And we're going to let that beef get tender. What made it all shiny is the fact that I put um, oil on it and baked it at 350. So the pumpkin is cooked, but I want the pumpkin browned. Okay. Now I have scooped out the flesh of the pumpkin that I have baked and I am sauteing it to brown it lightly in butter. And I'm going to add, remember that beautiful corn I got? I sauteed that too, but I'm going to add it now because the browning will not hurt it. And we're going to let that all cook down. And this beef has gotten, mmm, that's gorgeous. What I'm going to do To make this a little bit Latin is add a little unsweetened chocolate to it. I'm scraping off some unsweetened chocolate. If I didn't have chocolate to add, I might add brandy, but the chocolate has done the trick. And you saw how much I added? Mm, less than an eighth of an ounce of chocolate. Just enough to taste. Just enough to add depth. Now, our brown vegetables go in here. massive amounts of sage in my garden and we are going to make a brown butter with this sage under the food. <laughs> so now here we are with the polenta. I've added water, boiling water to my cornmeal and butter. I'm going to let it cook down. Now I'm going to get some Parmesan and I am going to saute some sage. And my favorite way to cut herbs is with scissors. Sage, Parmesan, butter, Looking a little dry, gonna add some white wine. Why add water when you can add white wine? Mmm. Mmm. I'm still gonna say more cheese. That is such a comfort food. Polenta is such a comfort food. Here we have pumpkin stew mm. on sage polenta. Mm. Oh, is that delicious? Good for Halloween.